morning. Uh, my name is Brad Graham, and I'm the Director of Business Development and Strategy for John Patrick University. I'm also a 1987 Grace graduate and have a passion for helping other people be healthy. Uh, we are super excited about our alliance with Grace College. Our alliance with Grace College complements and builds on Grace's science-based programs as John Patrick University brings disciplines in medical imaging, integrative and functional medicine, and healthcare administration to Grace College. So let me say this, if you're a pre-med student, a pre-chiro student, a master's degree in integrative and functional medicine could be the difference in medical school admission or may offer an alternate path in the medical field. Or if you have a passion for helping other people improve their health, this integrative and functional med medicine program is awesome and will help you uh, go down that path. An even more incredible thing is that you'd be able to create this degree with our alliance with Grace College both your bachelor's and your master's degree in four years at Grace College. Um, something else is special about uh, John Patrick University is our integrative and functional medicine programs and other programs have specializations in areas, which is unique to, to, to John Patrick University. So with integrative and functional medicine, we have specializations in nutrition, lifestyle medicine, and sports medicine. Also, the medical imaging field is in need of expertly trained employees. At JPU, you will get the training in the latest technology and techniques in the GRACE slash JPU Medical Imaging Bachelors of Science. Also, our MHA programs offer specializations in oncology, radiology, and exec the executive track. Uh, coming soon will be a specialization in memory care. Today, you will hear from our president, Brett Murphy, and our Dean of Integrative and Functional Medicine, Michael Dubanowitz. Uh, Brent is a medical physicist who has spent 30 years excelling in the oncology space. Uh, Michael is a classically trained chef and an expert and counselor in the areas of addiction treatment and an expert in the areas of integrative and functional medicine. So with that, Brent, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Brad. Um, thank you for the introduction and, and welcome to our virtual open house. What we're gonna do in this presentation is walk through the differentiators of JPU, what makes us different, why we would be a great opportunity for you to continue your education and higher learning, and uh, what our initiatives are, right? What our passions are, so you can get a, a real life taste of what it, be, what it would be like to be a, a JPU student. So if we, if we look at some of the history here, um, my background is Brad had noted, I'm a medical physicist and most people don't know exactly what that is. I've been blessed to have spent uh, my career in the area of radiation oncology, um, uh, nuclear medicine and diagnostic radiology working with physicians, working with radiation oncologists, working with radiologists, right? And all the other team members in those disciplines, right? To advance the imaging modalities and the treatment modalities in the cancer fields. Now, my background is, is I have a master's in medical physics, uh, MBA from Hawaii Pacific University and a, a bachelor's in health physics from uh, Purdue University. So let's take a look at JPU and uh, what we have here. Where is JPU located? Well, we're nestled in right downtown South Bend, Indiana. Okay, we're about a mile, mile and a half south of the University of Notre Dame. And if we look to learn more about JPU, right, we're a young university, right? But uh, we've progressed very rapidly in some very unique and niche degrees. We were established in September of 2009, right? We're nationally accredited, we're programmatic accredited in respective disciplines, all right? So we're state and nationally accredited and uh, we participate in something called SARA. SARA is the, uh, the State Authorization Reciprocity Agreement and 49 of the 50 states participate in that. California does not, so we went out and got separate, separate license in California. So we pull in students from all over the country. Right, we're very proud with our national accreditation is that in 2017, we re received a very high reward of School of uh, Excellence. And um, well, what they do is they, they come out and, uh, and do an audit and then evaluate and compare against hundreds of other member institutions, which would be colleges and universities. So we take our accreditation serious. We take the metrics very serious. And um, one of the ones that we're most excited about when we monitor the different metrics, which would be student metrics and graduate satisfactory, uh, satisfaction metrics, but one's kind of unique and just really resonates well with me. And that's the one that's called graduate employer satisfaction. So if you think about this, right, 
when our students graduate and they go to further their employment, right, in their respective discipline, right, the true testament is how do they perform, right? Uh, are, are they professionally developed? Is their skill set high? And are they hungry? Are they making, are they contributing to that uh, employer? And, and so for years, we've had the highest scores in that graduate employer satisfaction. That's a, one of the, the, the most exciting metrics for me to monitor because it's kind of proof in the pudding if we're doing the right things and teaching the right things. More about JPU, right? We have financial aid approval. So we do have FSA, that's federal student aid, right? We participate in something called the Student uh, and Exchange Visitor Program. That's for international students to come to JPU and study and uh, take care of, uh, of the vets in the military by participating in the GI Bill and, and uh, VA loans as well. Now, when we look at the university, right? It's very unique. We are four schools one university, one mission. So one of our schools is the School of Physics and Radiological Sciences. The other school, one second school, is the School of Medical Imaging Sciences. Those are the areas that I resonate in and have got about over three decades of experience. School of Business and Informatics, and you'll see why we've entered that space. And our, one of our more exciting ones as we grow is the School of Integrative and Functional Medicine. And we're going to talk about those schools, right? What makes us different? Why we're in the, those niche spaces and, and what drives us? What's our passion? So before we get into the, the nitty gritty of those programs, you know, what is JPU? What makes us different, right? I think one of the key things is, is that our faculty are clinical. Our faculty are in the industry, right? Over 90% of our faculty, right, today as you're watching this, are in the clinic. Right, are in their respective industry area. So we have leading clinical and industry experts. They are nationally and internationally recognized. Our delivery method provides an opportunity that they don't have to live in South Bend, Indiana, right? We've got faculty that live abroad. We've got faculty from coast to coast. We've got faculty from California to New York to Florida, faculty in Canada, faculty in Europe, right? And um, that, that just really brings a nice perspective, not only to professionalism and culture, but also to the areas of expertise that they bring to the table and how the sciences are advancing in, in those respective disciplines, right? What's very unique is our teaching assistants are all graduate level teaching assistants in the field, right? When I came up the pathway of higher education and went to college, I had some great TAs that really did help and support, but they were fellow students, right? That maybe were one semester or one year ahead of, ahead of me. So, right, we really drive home the didactic curriculum, but with a clinical twist and our clinical faculty and our clinical TAs make a huge difference in that. It's very important for us, if you will, to make sure that students have the respective resources. So we've got leading library resources and journal resources to supplement their education. We participate in applied clinical research opportunities as well. So if you want to get published, we have many faculty that are in that space. Relevant curriculum, which includes emerging technologies, right? We've always believed part of the secret sauce was that if we had the best faculty, right, delivering the best curriculum, right, right, with the best delivery system, it could be successful. And that's part of our core. But what's really unique is our curriculum is very, very current, right? So we really feel that uh, if we're running the classes and we have two delivery modes, one is going to be a blended learning environment that combines, right, the virtual learning with boot camps. Right, so students and faculty come together at boot camps that really gels together. Some of our programs, right, are oriented all online, all distance learning, right? And again, applying those learning uh, uh, delivery techniques from industry leaders makes it very dynamic, right? So we want to be engaged with the students, right? Our faculty are not only in the industry, they're passionate about what they're teaching. Right. So it's not something that's 20 to 30 years outdated. Now, some of the sciences, right, some of the sciences, right, the formulism, right, that's been around for for decades and hundreds of years. And we have to teach that. But imagine being taught that and how it's applied in medicine. Right. That's what's exciting. And that's what drives our faculties to get that across. Right. So applied skills are the foundation of our instructions. We do something unique. We take the didactic requirements right, the didactic education and put the clinical twist on it. And what that does is it makes it easier to understand, makes you appreciate why you're learning something versus just learning, taking a test and kind of doing a brain dump, right? And so that makes it very, very exciting for us.
workers. Understanding the delivery of those programs, that blended learning environment, right? Our programs are accelerated, right? So you can go from high school to AS in 16 months. You can go from an AS to a BS in 16 months. You can go from a BS to a master's in 16 months. So from scratch, from high school to a master's, 48 months, right? Four years. We do cater to the working professional. We also can work with institutions and blend these degrees as, as you're getting your bachelor's, you could be working and earning your master's at the same time. So our accelerated blended programs are 16 months, that's four trimesters, right? So we run three trimesters, right, a year. And so those are 15 weeks in duration. 13 weeks is online. There's a one week boot camp. And it used to be six, six days, right? Uh, boot camps. So we've narrowed that down to three 12 hour days, like long weekends, a Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Faculty come in, all the students come in. It's very collegiate, a lot of collaboration. It's a lot of fun. Lectures are pre recorded for those online lectures. So you can watch them once. You can watch them at noon. You could watch them at two in the morning, right? When you wake up, you could watch them late at night. You can watch them more than once. You can watch them five minutes at a time, 15 minutes at a time, or one hour at a time. And the other unique thing is that we have a rolling enrollment. We offer all the courses every semester so that you could start in January, May, or September. We cater to the working professional. We cater to the working student, right? We cater to somebody that wants to accelerate and roll up their sleeves and work hard that may also have other responsibilities, whether that may be a job or taking care of family members. So we, we, we try to customize the program plans of study around the student to ensure that they can optimize their success. Now, some of our programs are completely online, right? Programs are 16 months, four trimesters, similar format as you can see there, 14 weeks are online, one week's a break, right? Lectures are pre-recorded, watch them as much as you want, right? And, and again, a new cohort starts every January, May, and September. This creates such great flexibility. If you're interested in a program and you find out about it in October, you don't need to wait until the following September to start right? You could start that January if you wanted to, or you could do more homework, or you could dip your feet and try one course in January and start in May, right? So just a lot of opportunities by that rolling enrollment. So let's look at a couple of the schools, right? School of Physics and Radiological Sciences. What degree programs exist within the school? So we've got the Masters of Medical Physics, and that's my profession, right? So we've got the leaders in nuclear medicine, the leaders in radiation oncology physics, the leaders in imaging physics, right? We've got the Masters of Medical Health Physics. Medical Health Physics is radiation safety, very similar to medical physics, but focuses more on safety and more on regulatory. Health Physics, Health Physics is unique. It's got three to four different disciplines within it. It's got medicine, medical side of the house. It's got environmental, it's got industry, and it's got regulatory. So that's very vast. Um, and then if we wanted to add in when we say on the uh, industry side, that, that could also include, if you will, nuclear power, nuclear power plants. We've got masters in medical dosimetry. Now that's a really unique one. That's the treatment planners. When a patient is diagnosed with cancer, right, if they have right, it was one of their treatment options, radiation therapy, they're gonna get a lot of images and those images then we run what's called a treatment plan. That treatment plan is like a flight simulator of how we're gonna use the machine to treat and kill their cancer. We're reenacting uh, or re-bringing back the nanomedicine program. We have a bachelor's in radiation therapy. That's the techs that run these machines, right? We've got the physics and math that's going through accreditation and then we have a certificate medical physics assistant going through accreditation. The next school is going to be the School of Medical Imaging Sciences. And what programs do we have here? Right, we have a Bachelor's in Medical Imaging with four different specializations or concentrations. One in nuclear medicine, ultrasound, which is also called what sonography, CT, MRI. Now, somebody may already be working in that area and just need to come back and get a dual discipline. In healthcare right now, right, a lot of imaging specialists are coming to the table, right, with the need of needing two different disciplines. Why? Because hospitals can utilize them more, right? And they're gonna be a better hire if they have a CT and a PET background, a CT and MRI background, right? And we also have an associates in radiologic technology. That would be for like an X-ray tech. And if we look at the foundation of radiation therapy, so in this open house, 
right? A lot of this stuff in radiation people just aren't aware of. So let's take a real quick walk through, right? What this looks like, all right? So let's start with the very basics. Radiation can kill cancer cells, right? That's great news, right? Cancer's bad, but radiation can kill the normal tissue cells. So that's not good. So it's a very simple goal, radiation oncology. Hit the bad guys and miss the good guys, right? How do we do that? Well, we're gonna make sure we're aiming at the right target, right? We're gonna focus that radiation, make sure the radiation misses the normal tissues, right? And then realize that the patient is not a static phantom or a static object that doesn't move. We move, we wiggle, we breathe. Our diaphragm moves, right? Which moves our lungs both superior to inferior and anterior to posterior, right? It, just the diaphragm itself is gonna create motion even in our abdominal section, right? So we gotta think about those things, but technologies exist on how to handle those. So let's look at the role of what a radiation therapist would be. Well, in the past, they might be an x-ray tech, right? Know a little bit about imaging and advanced imaging. And then as far as a radiation therapist, they would do the CT and they would be the one, the technologist treating the patient. Where is the future taking it? They're going to be involved in imaging, fusing these different images. What if you took a CT and put it on top of an MRI? Could you get more information, right? They're going to be involved in supporting to make sure on the imaging side that we're doing the right protocols and right techniques. Then there's this thing called contouring, right? In the inside, we may all have the same organs, but they're different shapes, sizes, and slightly different locations sometimes, right? We've got to contour, we've got to draw out where those are at, right? So they'll help that treatment plan or the dosimetrist. They'll still be involved in treating the patient, but what about analytics then, right? Monitoring the shifts, right? Monitoring how we treated those patients, right? And then being involved in risk management and safety. That's huge. The technologies are progressing so fast. That medical dosimetrist, as we noted before, that's the treatment planner, right? They're going to work. And this is like a flight simulator if you want to think about it, right? But what you're flying is you are the radiation beam, right? And you're looking at the patient's body, right? With CTs, MRIs, and PET images, right? And so you're going to contour those structures. The doctor will contour or draw out where the target is, where the cancer is at. We've got different techniques that we can use for planning. Some of them are very advanced and we'll look at some of these, IMRT and VMAT, and then to do a plan review. So if we look at this 3D planning, what we used historically is shown on the image labeled A there. And here we've got two beams one beam's coming in from the right lateral and one's coming in from the left lateral, right? And if you could think about this, that color distribution that you see is the amount of radiation dose. That reddish orange color, that's high radiation dose. We're killing anything inside of there, right? We're killing a lot of cells. So if there's cancer in there, we're, we're probably killing it. The lighter color in the blue is the lesser amount of radiation. Now, if you look at that, that would envision on the left-hand side that this cancer is a great big square. Well, it's not, it's not a great big square. We don't have cancers that look like that. But what we do with advanced planning techniques called IMRT, intensity modulated radiation therapy. Think about if you were treating with many beams and each beam had a checkerboard effect and each checker had a different amount of radiation. Now, if you've ever played checkers, right? The size of the squares are about an inch by an inch, let's say right? The size of squares we're talking here are a millimeter or two millimeters by two millimeters. So they're itty bitty checkers, but I can adjust, we can adjust the amount of radiation that comes out from each. And then you end up with a distribution that you see in B, right? That the high dose, that reddish orange color, right, is only where the cancer is at. And so you notice here, we can spare the spinal cord. We can spare on the outsides, if you will, is where the product gland is at. That's what makes 80 to, that's responsible for 80 to 90% of the salivary production. So this technique allows us to spare critical structures like brain and, uh, well, brain, the brain stem, the cord, right? The parotids, the submandibular glands. And uh, we can then conformally treat the cancer versus treating a square or rectangle. So now if we look at how can we pull the imaging into radiation therapy and make it even better. So in the top of that diagram, right, on the left, you see a CT image. On the right, you see an MRI. What if I put those on top of each other, right, and then use these squares? I can minimize those squares. I got to get it lined up first, right? CTs show bone, right? 
very, very well. Bone and air, right? But what the MRI shows is better, what we call soft tissue contrast. I could see the borders of the organs better. I could see the borders of the cancer better, right? So some of the trends that we'll see when imaging are fusion, deformable registration, fancy word we say molecular imaging, right? Let's not study just static anatomy. Let's look at the physiology. And then the advancement of these IGRT modalities, right? When we get better quality and lower the dose. So let's take a look at some of these. New engine trends, will they make it to oncology? Some of those trends, right? Nuclear imaging. Here in this panel on the left, we see what's referred to as a coronal image set, right? That goes from head down to uh, just below the pelvis, right? You can see the legs there and those two black things in the middle are the lungs. That's a CT. In the middle, that image doesn't look as good. And so that doesn't look very good. That's a PET scan, right? But it's gonna show physiology. So where you see the dark black, that's where there's uptake. That could either be normal uptake, right? On an organ that's got a metabolism or just where the fluid has went. For example, the lower one's the bladder, right? The upper one is the brain, but those black dots in the middle, eh, they're not supposed to be there. That's cancer. Could be nodes or it could be primary disease. What if I took the left one and the middle one and put them together and fused them, right? Put some color behind it. Now I've got a huge, fused image using molecular imaging PET, right? And attaching it to the CT. And I can see those dots in the middle, right? They weren't supposed to be there. It looks like we got one sitting in the lung. We got some in the mediastinum and we might have one sitting there in the liver, right? That big yellow one towards the bottom, that's just, that, that's part of the isotope uptake that was normal uptake in the bladder. So that's not cancer and that's not cancer in the brain. It's a whole new way to look at things and it works very, very well. So let's continue looking at some of these new advances. SRS stereotactic radio surgery, it's been around for a long time, but this is a neat machine called a cyber knife, right? So here a patient lays on a table and we can treat in 100 different beams, maybe 120 different beams, very small, very focused with high precision. Why? They attach the treatment machine to an industrial robot that has sub-millimeter accuracy. Just amazing. And then the table can move in all directions, right? We can treat brain lesions, lung lesions, a lesion right next to the spinal cord. If you remember, we said the whole concept is to hit the bad guy and miss the good guys, right? And that's what we can do. So this stereotactic radio surgery, great technology that can be applied to other body sites. Now let's move in to look at some of the other schools that are um, and programs uh, within JPU. I'm going to uh, pass my uh, pass the baton to Dr. Michael, sir. Thank you, Brent. So absolutely fascinating uh, what we're seeing coming out of the school of imaging and radiological sciences. Now, some of you may have that technical background that you've been taught at JPU and you're now looking to expand into the business sector side. We're understanding the medical components, but how are we running the day-to-day -day operations? How are we looking at the legal aspects? What are we looking at as far as future trends? How do you staff your hospital? How do you train your staff? How do you work with contract negotiations? Well, here within the School of Business and Informatics, we have designed that curriculum with a very, very unique discipline of the Master's in Healthcare Administration with three unique disciplines. They are in executive, oncology, and radiology. As you can see, big data is also going to drive our decisions for the future, and we are developing and uh, processing those future programs. And for those who have an associates in radiological sciences or radiological technology, within the School of Business and Informatics, we also have a bachelor's degree in radiological sciences of a degree completion, giving you that advanced additional training. So why study the master's in healthcare leadership, uh, healthcare administration at uh, JPU? It really focuses on the clinical setting as we talked about. So you're going to understand the uh, components of management, economic, financial, legal, and really what is the future of healthcare uh, today that will benefit our patients and healthcare settings tomorrow. So our first exciting specialization in radiology. This is a huge differentiator with JPU that you will only find here. So with this program specifically focuses on the operations side. 
So we're going to look at the maintenance of the con of conventional sections of radiology, CT, MRI, and really then looking at, again, operations, finances, strategic uh, components, and really putting that together to run a very successful division within your healthcare setting. The second focus, again, only available to JPU is a concentration in oncology. And this is, again, uh, paying tenants to what uh, Mr. Murphy has learned throughout his 30-year career within this sector. So here, we place a uh, really focus on operations, on maintenance, growth, and really the core tenants of oncology. So we're going to look at uh, research in surgical oncology, medical oncology, and radiation oncology. This will really differentiate you as a person coming to the table in your healthcare administration sector with really being a subject matter specialist. And our final uh, track within the uh, healthcare administration track is really the executive. And this is really helping you understand the leadership aspect of healthcare administration. So again, looking at the economics, the climate, legal, communications, you can be, again, a differentiator in leading your healthcare sector towards a more successful future. Now, I serve as well and within the other school is the School of Integrative and Functional uh, Medicine. And this, as Mr. Graham said earlier, is also great for those in pre-chiropractic, pre-medical, or if you're on a wait list for medical school, how can you differentiate yourself for the future? On top of bringing the School of Integrative and Functional Medicine to John Patrick University, this is part of the larger scale treatment plan. So as Mr. Murphy described with some of the amazing cutting edge uh, technologies that are coming out, patients will also need secondary care. And here's where the School of Integrative and Functional Medicine really comes into play, where we are looking at mind, body, and spirit, but also from clinical aspects and science-based and relevant-based uh, research as well. So we offer a Master of Science in Integrative and Functional Medicine with very unique disciplines in lifestyle medicine, nutrition, sports medicine, and so forth. For those of you that may want to really concentrate in a specific area of study, but not do a full degree program, we offer graduate certificates. One of them that we are very proud of and one of the only in the country is a graduate certificate in nutrition oncology. So if we are seeing a very big trend here at JP, that's one of our driving missions as well. So you can as well look at getting your master's in healthcare administration with a focus in oncology earning an additional graduate certificate in nutritional oncology, all through JPU and really segmenting yourself as the subject matter expert as you get into industry. So very, very fascinating on what we were able to deliver as far as a quality, comprehensive education. So if you are taking our master's program, there are core courses that every student takes before they branch off into their specific disciplines. So you are going to be looking at integrative and functional nutrition. What is that? So not only are we looking at classical cl clinical dietetics and applied nutrition, we are going to look at blood labs, functional blood labs. What specific panels would you run if a person comes into your office and says they're tired? So we are going to look at everything under the sun and then how to specifically create a treatment planning diagnosis. You see a really key word here, and this is the third bullet down on your left, uh, lifestyle medicine. This is also the future of healthcare medicine and wellness as many uh, boards and insurance panels are starting to, to jump on board and really understand that it focuses on sleep, wellness, uh, mindfulness, all of this plays a huge component in the treatment plan. We also have really unique courses in herbal medicine. And in this course, you're going to learn over 35 different herbs, their contraindications and how they tag along with treatment plans. So let's just say you are going through oncology and you're going, or you were diagnosed with cancer and you have to work with your oncologist. This is very important to understand what herbs can possibly interact with your treatment plan or can act as a supplement to help reduce some of the, the uh, effects of going through your cancer care. 
as we said, medicine is leading the future, but with specific key differentiators. And one of the additional courses here is in diet, genes, and nutrition. Your genetics plays a huge focus on either exacerbating a disease or help reducing the responsiveness of that specific condition. So here we are looking within the course in proteomics, metabolomics, nutrigenomics, and we're looking down to the cellular level on what specific foods you eat can inflame a disease or can reduce the onset of it. Absolutely fascinating. So let's take a look at some of the specific classes or specific concentrations that you can take within your master's program. We have the traditional nutrition track. So here we look at preventing and managing specific diseases, but we are also going to explore the latest trends in food science and technology. Here we're going to look at very specific courses in eating disorders, and some of that can be co-occurring as well. It's not just a one-size-fits-all. So how can you actually treat the patient as well with teaching them proper behavioral modifications? We're also going to look at a very, very fun course and a passion of mine as Mr. Graham has talked and with my original background as a classically trained chef in gastronomy science. And you're probably saying, what is gastronomy? That sounds so funky. I want to take that course. Well, gastronomy is basically the long umbrella of the, the study of food. But here we are getting into really key specific uh, areas of focus in colonology, food science, food technology, and looking at how does olive oil interact if you put it in a microwave and how can it interact if it works in a frying pan? What different heating elements does it break down its chemical structure? Can that differentiate its nutritional absorption rate once it's in your stomach? So that is a way to differentiate yourself. Why come to JPU to study functional medicine nutrition? Going back and circling back to lifestyle medicine, as we said, this is the future of healthcare. So here we're going to look at the foundational tenets of lifestyle medicine, which JPU has aligned its curriculum with the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. So we're going to look at physical activity and weight management, health and wellness coaching, mindfulness. That's a huge component when a person is diagnosed with a health condition. What does your mind play in the onset of your treatment plans? And this class is taught by licensed therapists. So we are getting down to the emotional sector and your responsive uh, rate and how to remove those blockages so you can move forward with success in your wellness plans. Another program that's a huge differentiator is sports medicine aligned with functional medicine. Why did we do this? This allows you to expand yourself as a health professional and really go into further facilities of employment, such as wellness centers, colleges, and schools. And again, look at the functional part of wellness. So here we take advanced classes in exercise physiology, integrative kinesiology, and sports medicine and athletic training. So if you have a person who comes in with a specific health condition, you can not only look at the functional blood analysis, but work with the PT, chiropractor, medical doctor as well, and create a very comprehensive treatment plan to make sure the athlete is training at its optimal level. So one of the big questions that students ask us at JPU and also in the School of Integrative and Functional Medicine are what certifications are available to me? As Mr. Murphy said, we gear our curriculum towards the working professional. So if you choose to go for additional board certifications, JPU has aligned itself with as many certifications as possible. Myself as your advisor, along with your program director and others at the university, once we identify your specific course of track, we will then showcase to you the different certifications that you see listed available to you, which could be the Certified Clinical Nutritionist, American Council on Exercise Health Coach, and even the International Society of Sports Nutrition, Sports Nutritionist Credential. And this is important, again, with keeping part of our metrics and how we've been recognized by our accreditor for excellence in how we work and towards our success. Now, we do this for uh, a couple of reasons. JPU knows and understands the importance of industry trends. We have been doing this since day one and making sure 
we are aligning ourselves with what is being asked of in industry, and we bring that to the classroom. So you will see JPU in conventions, fairs, in virtual symposia, stop in and say hello, but also we bring that relevancy back to the classroom because again, what is being taught out there, we bring to you in the classroom and teach you. Second, as part of Mr. Murphy's uh, mission and our mission with uh, JPU and part of our vision is being involved in the community. So not only seeing those trends, but also being a part of the process, coming to the table, being a voice of the university and saying, here's what our students are asking. Here's what they are wanting to learn. Can this be taught as well? And also just being a part of community alliances. This is very important with making sure JPU has its footprint and keeping part of our, our vision and mission. And this is done as part of Mr. Murphy's passion where we dedicate to train the future. The future is today, but also part of our path of creating a better tomorrow. And we do this with commitment and honor and just very passionate with our, our delivery and our students' success. We do this by celebrating our students. Our students are JPU. They are the ones that make the curriculum come alive once they are out in industry. And we are very proud of all the exciting things that they have to offer and bring to industry and community and their wellness centers. And it's something that we are just very, very uh, passionate and, and celebrate wholeheartedly. So as we start to close our presentation today, the JPU difference is very clear. We offer rolling enrollment, a very flexible schedule, again, as it caters towards the working adult and the working professional. Pre-recorded lectures, as Mr. Murphy said, that you could watch any time of the day to really refresh your mind of what you're learning of the, the topics of that day. Clinical faculty, again, one of the huge differentiators of JPU, and they are industry leaders. So we are bringing the industry to you. And all of this is done through a very robust learning platform tailored to your success. So on behalf of Mr. Graham and Mr. Murphy at John Patrick University, I want to thank you all for allowing us to help you achieve technical expertise for success. You can follow us on all the social media pages that you see listed from Facebook to LinkedIn to Instagram. And for more information, please contact at the information you see below and give us a call. We welcome you as a future student at John Patrick University. And thank you for joining us today and again, helping you achieve technical expertise for success.